Oh, you always. usually get all the attention on gorgeous. the shelf. Yeah, you, you heard that, right? How are you going to compete with a kid? Yeah, never you got a dog here, too? Never follow kids. <laughs> you bring a dog, I win. We're for sure we're losers. <laughs> uh, the, this production is called Ashena Maidel. Did I say that Ashena right? Ashena Maidel. Ashena Maidel. It's a Yiddish phrase for a pretty girl. And it's, uh, well, it's a story about two sisters who are both pretty girls, but it's, a, it's an American play about a Jewish family, just the way Long Day's Journey is an American play about an Irish family. And uh, it's a play that was done off-Broadway a couple of years ago and it won many awards and they made a Hallmark Hall of Fame movie out of it and won a lot of Emmys. It's never been done in this area. There have been and 300 so, productions of all around this the world, around the world. But never been done here and uh, we're glad to be premiering it here. Now, Harvey, how, how did you become involved in A Shane and Mato? Well, it's a long story, but we only got six minutes. I got a phone call from a fellow by the name of Al Waxman. That uh, guy right over there? Yeah. yeah. He says, I want you to do a job. And he said, I want you to think about it. I want you to pick up the script and think about it. And uh, if you'd like it, we'd like you to, to do it. So I read I the script to, and I I have to tell you it. what's yeah. behind that kind of question. The, the amount of money involved for Off-Broadway, for sure, and certainly here in Canada, in theater, presupposes that you're doing this as much out of love as any other search for reward. Mm -hmm. And to get Harvey involved meant that Harvey would have to, uh, you know, give up other things and then one would hope, in order to give up other things, that his heart and his intentions and his commitment would be 100% behind this, which they are. And so that's why I asked him to think about it, because it's, it's a big step. And he was glad to take that, and we're certainly glad he took it. Why did you decide to do this, Harvey? Because, of well, course... It's a... <clears throat> I got too serious, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a very emotional play. It's a very emotional play. It's about about two sisters who are reunited. Uh, they haven't seen each other for 16 years. It's, 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 it's set against the background of the Holocaust. Um, my wife is a Holocaust survivor. My in-laws are. And this is about surviving. This is not... This is about surviving. Mm -hmm. This is about dysfunctional families. This is about... It's a, it's a wonderful story, and I, it, it's a story that I really wanted to be a part of telling. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a, a, I wanted to be able to work with Al again. There's a terrific cast. Uh, he's doing a he's doing a hell of a job directing. It's just I'm enjoying every day. It's it's it, I mean these are 15 hour days and these are tough. Now you but play the Mordecai and the, the father, the father. Yeah. and you're directing this. Right. Um, from your perspective, this really hit home for you. This story. Well, yeah. As a young kid, I remember uh, after the war there was a request put out uh, if you had space in your home to to bring in so-called uh, the phrase then was displaced persons. And a lot of the uh, concentration camp survivor, I was about 13 or 14, these kids were about 19 or 20. And we had space in our home, we brought them in, and I got to learn uh, by osmosis, as it were, their, their nightmares, their hopes, their dreams, and I, I got pretty close with them. But that's like the 40s and the 50s, now we're into the 90s, and the phrase dysfunctional family is a very current issue, I think, uh, represents a very current issue that we can all relate to. And this is a family that has some dysfunctionalism that is trying to overcome it. I don't want you to think that this story is without humor. It's a heavy emotional story, but like any good writing, and this is very good writing from a woman called Barbara LeBeau, it's full of uh, uh, emotion, but it's also full of humor. If you remember Sophie's Choice, this is a story about two sisters who were by chance separated before the war. One is brought up in Poland through concentration camps. The other is brought up in New York with her father and uh, on mellow rolls and, and, and stickball, as she says. They're reunited after the war. And they were separated by virtue of his action and inaction, some mistakes that he made in life, some choices that he made in life. Right. So he's got something to make up for his character. And these two women who hardly know each other, who are sisters, are suddenly sharing an apartment in New York. They're brought together, and the three of them have to function again as a family against this background of Holocaust and assimilation post-Holocaust. Well, we've run out of time, but I have to say, Harvey, I have never seen you look this serious. This is obviously um, a very heavy role, though, It's, it's for you. a very, yeah. yeah. I, I'm playing a, a 69 year old man and uh, you know they, my hair is dyed and, and the full beard and everything else and it, it's a what I, I urge everybody to come and see it it's a wonderful play and uh, don't be afraid of it. it it's in English incidentally in case you didn't know that and and please we're at the North York Center come on down and see us begins April 20th it's called Shane and Madel thank you very much Harvey Atkins. I'll ask you. It's a pleasure to have you this morning